Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's go to Madagascar. We are. Uh, we have a question. We're asking support from our Sheikh, inshallah, to send us something that is going to give benefit for us here and hereafter. We are running away from knowledge that does not benefit us. The knowledge that does not benefit us, it gives us what? Huh? Curses. Malayani. Things that don't benefit us. Knowledge that doesn't benefit us. Today, the world is filled with knowledge. At every turn, you see so much knowledge. Open your phone, you see 10,000 things continuously. Knowledge. But does it benefit you? No. Most of it is nonsense. So we're asking knowledge from the heavenly stations that is going to benefit us who are on this way and for entire mankind to find their way in this very dark and confusing times, how to save their faith and how to go out from this world with that faith. Okay, all kids go to the other room. No. You go to. How did go? You can go there and play. That's what I'm saying. Just don't make too much noise. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So, where was I? Yeah? Nali Sharif. And so, this world is filled with curses now. And mankind, in this dark darkness, with so much knowledge in front of them, they're getting more and more lost. The people who bring true knowledge, knowledge from the heavens, they are the prophets. No one else. In reality, all knowledge comes from them. Even dunyawi knowledge comes from the prophets. Then they're inheritors. These are the friends of Allah. So real knowledge comes from them. But never before that they have been so cursed at, maligned, scandalized, huh? cursed at, pushed away. Never before in 1400 years, as much as they have been in this century. The whole world, whole shaitans have to conspire to bring down the whole structure of Haq. To bring down the whole structure of Haq that was built 1400 years. So that this confusion can happen and people will turn away from guides to sh let them, to show them what is beneficial and what is not. So everyone is free in the name of freedom, right? Everyone is free to look. But in that freedom, there is not guides who are guiding you, not heavenly guides that are guiding you. In that freedom, it is Dajjal and Shaitans that are guiding you. So, when they guide, when these Dajjals, they guide, one of the things that they're going to teach is don't trust this holy people and they began all the way from Adam salam, these shaitans whispering to make confusion whispering to the sons of Adam salam, whispering to the offsprings and the followers of all the prophets to make confusion and we see that confusion always happening we see so many years Shafani would talk about fitna and fitna and fitna so many years. We lived those days too. We lived when people were making so much fitna about him and how with that fitna came with so much bad eyes, it came with so much nazar, it came with so much curses that people are sending. And with Allah's wisdom, he is also getting hit a little bit here and there and he is suffering. Eh, Holy Prophet wasalam, suffered. If the moon can be hit by Nazar, then what about people? And the holy ones, they are the ones who are tested the most. 
So what were they saying? All sorts of things. They will find one thing that has nothing to do with nothing, and they will make it into something, into something, into something, into something. So they don't just make things up out of nothing. They take something. They take a small thing. They may take something and they twist it until it is not that something anymore. It becomes another thing. And then with their plannings and with their plottings and with their confusion, and they have so many plans. And because Shafani is walking the way of Huck, if you walk in the way of Huck, you will have so many enemies. And those ones that are with Shaitan, they'll become the enem your enemies too. So everything that they... Don't think that they were slandering him and making fitna. Those ones that they are Wahhabis. Don't think that they are Kafirs, or Yahudis, or Christians, Muslims. We dig a little bit deeper, our own brothers. We dig a little bit deeper, you say, those who are closest to him. Now you see, isn't this, don't you see this pattern happening with the prophets? Don't you see this pattern happening with all Evi Allah? So much fitna from that time until now, but Shah Malana too. For example, now they are resurfacing this fitna about Shaykh Maulana in certain Muslim countries and they're calling him out of Islam, they're calling him crazy, they're calling him deranged, they're calling him wrong Akira, all these kinds of things. Showing all these videos of him that is taken out of context. And they're saying, look, look, what kind of a Shaykh he is. We must cancel the Naqshbandi order. You cancelled it so many years ago. Now why are you saying they are okay? People are challenging it. Although all the kings they got together and all the scholars they got together and they reviewed everything that is there and they said, no, this is, this is not about the tariqat that is wrong. The teachings are sound. People who follow the tariqat, they make their teachings and they may twist it a little bit here and there. They may exaggerate it, but it's not about the teachings. Are you going to say Islam is not sound because there are Muslims who take the teachings of Islam? And they call themselves terrorists and marriers and all these kinds of things? No. If you do that, if Muslims are doing that because of this tariqat, then it's exactly what the kafirs are doing about Islam. So they're saying about Shah Afandi, years, every year, years. He will collect some people, fitna happens, and everyone will disappear. He'll start all over again. He's never tiring, he's continuing. Does it hurt? It does. He doesn't show it, not to everyone, but it does. People, men making fitna, oh, women making fitna, forget about it. So, and that fitna, as a fitna of Shaykh Maulana, continues, as a fitna about the Holy Prophet, they said to us, some still continues, calling him so many names. Huh? I'm even shy to say. The fitna about our Shaykh still continues. It's just that it's a little bit quieter now because he's not physically there and they don't see him as a threat. So they say, well, he's not there. So they keep quiet. From calling him a killer to calling him a person who takes advantage of, you know, women, there's that, so many things they're calling him. His forehead is clear. His work is open. And the allegations, can we say allegations? I don't like to use too many clever words and clever sentences. I mean, use words straight. These claims, these, um, how you say? Uh, how you say what is worse than fitna? What is worse than confusion? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slander. slander. These slanders. Look, slanders hurt prophets. Huh? Slanders, they hurt prophets. They hurt even Ulul Azam prophets. Hazrat Musa was so angered by it because his own cousin, understand, his own cousin closest to him, slandered him. And Allah says, I give you the power to judge him. And he was so, his understanding how his reputation, his work, pulling people in, 
And because of that slander, it destroyed so many peoples and their afterlives as well. He was so upset that he told the earth to punish his own cousin. Cousin, no? Yeah? Nephew. It was his nephew. It was his brother's son. He's even much closer now in blood. So, that continued. Now you see, step by step, Sheriff Andy was also accused of all these things. Uh, I don't want to get too much into details. But we have to be awake and aware because we are not going to be um, free from this. If we are following in the footsteps of the prophets and the saints, it's going, to teach, it's going to touch us a little bit. May Allah not test us. We are not asking for it, but it's coming. And when it comes, we must be ready. What are we going to do? We're going to continue our way. We're not going to let that to stop us. As Shavani says so many times, the dogs may bark, but the caravan continues. If by the barking of the dogs, people in the caravan who are weak, who are scared, who are not trustworthy, they decide to join the dogs to bark, it's good. The caravan now will get rid of its dead weight. You can move much faster. Our work is how not to be that dead weight. As the khutbah is saying, build your faith, build your trust, build your love, build your commitment, build your service, build it, watch it grow. Don't kill it, don't pretend. So those matters, those things may come to us, don't be surprised. It has come to prophets, it comes to all saints. The fitna that they made about Shaykh Maulana, oh, so much. Fitna that they made about Shaykh Fendi, so much. Fitna that they made, let's say, during Hazrat Rumi's time, was that not fitna? So much fitna. It was a fitna that took Hazrat Shams away from him. In the Prophet Wasallam's time, was that not fitna? There was. After his time, it continued. So this will always be with the believers, but the believers must always be awake and aware and to have the power and the strength to continue with this. This is one of our struggles. Who knows? Maybe people are going to believe. People these days, they believe everything. But the heart of the sincere believer looks. The believer looks with the nur of Allah. Nothing is going to shake. And the believer and the murid knows that this is a time of confusion. And he knows that black will be white and white will be black. And we're asking that Shah Effendi be happy with us, to forgive us, to make us to continue this way as much as we can, to bring others into this way, and for us to be strong and not to back down for us to continue until we die. Amen. This is our promise. May Allah make us to keep this promise Amen. until we pass from this world, inshallah. May Allah forgive me and bless you. Al-Fatiha. <laughs>